Marcus Gunn Pupil, also known as Relative Afferent Pupil Defect, or RAPD. This is a very interesting physical exam finding, in particular when you are doing an eye exam. So the best way to explain the Marcus Gunn pupil is with a diagram. So here we have the eye, the right eye, the left eye, and the top row here represents a normal eye, normal pupillary response. So first, you have the right and left eye, where you can clearly see the pupils are the way they look normally. Then what you do is you shine a light represented by this yellow symbol into one of the eyes. And in particular here, we're shining the light into the right eye. And what will happen is that both the pupils will constrict equally. Then what you do is you do the same test, this time in the left eye. You shine the light into the left eye, and again, both pupils will constrict equally. So that's the physical exam finding during an eye exam of a normal eye. Now we have the second row. This is a patient where you have a defect, and in particular, a defect in the left eye. So what happens? First you shine the light in the unaffected eye, which in this case is the right eye, right here, and the response is normal. Both pupils constrict equally. But then you shine the light into the affected eye. In this case, the affected eye, the eye with the defect, is the left eye. Notice what happens. When you shine the light into the affected eye, you will see that the pupils actually dilate. This is also sometimes referred to as the swinging light test. And what they mean by that is they first shine the light in the unaffected eye, and then they swing the light over and shine it in the affected eye. And when they do that, they can see this type of pathological finding. So why would this happen? In what medical conditions would you have a Marcus Gunn pupil? So keep these in mind. The cranial nerve that we are talking about is cranial nerve 2, which is known as the optic nerve. And diseases of the optic nerve will result in a Marcus Gunn pupil. And those include optic nerve inflammation, also known as optic neuritis, optic neuropathy, glaucoma, and also retinal diseases such as retinal detachment. So keep these medical conditions in mind. So let's take a look at a clinical vignette and see what this looks like. A middle-aged woman comes to her physician's office with complaints of visual difficulties. A review of systems and physical exam are unremarkable except for her eye exam. When a light is shined into her left eye, there is no pupillary response in either eye. However, upon shining a light in her right eye, both ipsilateral and contralateral pupillary responses are apparent. Her extraocular movements are intact. What is the most likely location of her lesion? So let's draw a basic diagram to see what's happening here. We'll label this right, we'll label this left, and this is what the eyes look like normally. So what they did is they shined the light initially into her left eye. We'll represent that as the light. So the response that you got was that essentially there was no constriction, which is what you should have if there was no pathology. So obviously there's some problem with the optic nerve on the left side. Now I further wanted to explain this with another diagram, this one here. So this is 
the left eye and this is the right eye. So this question, first we shined the light into the left eye and because there's damage in that left optic nerve represented by that arrow, the response never gets to the CNS. So that's why you don't see that constriction of the pupil. But when you shine the light into the right eye, as you can see, the optic nerve transmits the signal to the CNS and then sends an outbound signal here to both the right and left ocular motor nerves. If you remember, ocular motor nerves, also known as cranial nerve 3, are able to cause pupillary constriction in both eyes in this scenario. But in this scenario over here on the left, unfortunately, you do not get the outbound signal because the inbound signal into the CNS is blocked because of this lesion right here. So going back to the question, the lesion is located in the optic nerve on the left side. So that would be choice C. A 45-year-old female with a long history of progressive myopia develops sudden patchy loss of vision in her right eye. She is very alarmed and rushes to her family doctor. Fundoscopic exam reveals a large retinal detachment in the right eye. The retina in the left eye is normal. When the pupillary light reflex is tested by shining a light in the right eye, the physician would note. So if you recall, retinal detachment is one of the causes of Marcus Gunn pupil. So let's see what would happen. Let's draw a little diagram here. So you have the right eye and the left eye. So the retinal detachment is in the right eye. So that's where the pathology is. So first, let's shine a light into the left eye. What would that result in? Essentially, what would happen is you would get a normal response, which is constriction of the pupil in both eyes. Now let's swing the light over and shine it in the right eye. What that would do is it would not produce constriction. So you would just remain in a state where pupils are essentially are dilated. So which of these answer choices matches that? Dilation of the right pupil and dilation of the left pupil. So that would be choice D.